So in the last video, we were on our way to calculating the ML diagram for methane. And one of the first steps in this was to figure out the symmetry of the salts. And so uh, we did that. We figured out that they reduced as A1 plus T2. We had four salts um, because we had four 1s orbitals from which they formed. One of them we knew was going to be the totally symmetric representation. That's the A1 salt. That we can easily draw a picture for. It was a little less clear how we would get to here. And so um, just like for stretches and bends for normal modes in vibrational spectroscopy, we use something called the projection operator, a mathematical tool that helped us visualize things. Um, you can use the projection operator to visualize salts, okay? And we're not gonna do that at this point yet. Later on when we get to some more examples, I don't wanna introduce too many new concepts at once. Uh, we will use the projection operator to show you how you could, for example, come up with that, the, this, these pictures, okay? How the T2 salts, um, have you come up with how, why the two T salts look like this, okay? But for now, I'm just giving you the answer that the T2 salts look like that. And what I want us to do instead is just check, our, check this answer and make sure and show why to ourselves, why these three salts um, are triply degenerate uh, and why they transform together as T2 symmetry. Okay, so let's try to do that um, on this next slide. So, you know, I've drawn this cube here. Obviously, we're in tetrahedral symmetry. Um, and this cube kind of just sets up four points of the tetrahedron and helps us visualize this. Um, so here is T2. Uh, it's three, zero, negative one, negative one, negative one in the TD character table. And so what we're doing here, again, just like what, what we always do when we're talking about representations, is we're talking about the values and transformation matrix. And here we're, I call the salts S1, S2, S3. So, you know, for each of these values, we have to look at um, what the value of this transformation matrix is. So for identity, that's very clear. It's ones across the board um, and all these non-diagonals are zero. That will get you three. And, and why weren't we able to break this up you know, why is it triply degenerate? That's not clear yet. Remember, um, things only transform together if they end up going into themselves, if they transform um, not just to like S1 going to negative S1 or S1. Um, if they transform into something else, like S1 going to S2, um, then you're gonna have this, this problem where they're gonna transform together. And so this is very similar to like when we're deriving certain character tables and we saw, for example, if we did a C3, X doesn't go perfectly into minus X or X. It goes into a combination, a linear combination of X and Y. And that uh, causes X and Y in that, whatever that point group is in this case, to um, transform together. So you'd have a dimensionality of two. So right now, you know, fine. We're just assuming these transform together because we know the answer is, is T, T2. And so these are going to be three. So that's fine. What about uh, if we do a C3? And so, um, you know, there's eight C3s. So again, we have to think about what C3 we pick here. Um, but the one I picked is gonna cause S1 to go to S2, um, S2 gonna go to S3, and S3 to go to S1. Um, and so uh, how that is going to work is that is going to be uh, a, let me just draw the axis here. So the C3 I chose goes from this vertex of the cube right through there, okay? And so um, this is a C3 and we're doing a rotation and we're gonna rotate it, um, we're gonna rotate it actually this way. So we can draw it clockwise. So what's gonna happen? This dark sphere is gonna to go to there. This dark sphere is gonna to go to there. And this white sphere is gonna to go to there. So what does that end up getting you? This one didn't move at all because the, the, the axis goes through the center of this sphere. So um, that sphere remained white, okay? This white went down there, here. And then we have a dark here, dark went to dark. 
here and this dark one up there. And so um, S1 went into S2. So that's what I have here, okay? Um, and then we're gonna do that same, we have the same C3 right here, doing a rotation, uh, 120 degrees rotation there. And so now that's gonna go there. This dark's gonna go into dark and dark is going to go into light. And what does that get you? That gets you S3. So S2 gave you S3. And now again, we're going to do um, 120 degree rotation across that same C3. You can choose any C3. They're all in the same class, right? Uh, so it doesn't matter. Um, you'll get the same answer. You'll, you'll get the same answer in the end of the character being zero, is what I should say, right? The specifics of the transformation matrix will be um, different, but the trace will always be the same. This is a beautiful thing about group theory. Okay, many beautiful things, but there's one. Um, and so, all right, so for this one, what's gonna happen, that's going to cause uh, this dark to um, move here, this light to move over there, and this dark to move there, and that ends up giving a dark here, a dark here, and a light there. And so S3 went to S1. And so your matrix, right, is going to look like, we can actually come up with the whole matrix here. Again, if you don't know where this is coming from, you have to go back to a row by column, matrix multiplication, if you're, if you're confused by all this, right? So we had S1, S2, and S3, and what do we say? We said S1 went to S2, S1 went to S2, S2 is going to S3, and S3 went to S1. And so that's gonna look something like zero, one, uh, zero, All right? Row by column, zero, one, zero, dotted with S1, S2, S3 is gonna get us S2. Um, S2 going to S3 is gonna be zero, zero, one. And we're gonna have one, zero, zero. S3 going to S1. Um, and so again, because all those moved to something else, when you take the trace, you're gonna get zero, okay? Um, next we have uh, C2, okay? So uh, a, a C2 here is, again, the C2 is a, a, a little harder to, um, to visualize, but the C2 is going to be um, bisecting it's gonna go in between these two atoms and these two atoms. So it's running like that. And we're doing 180 degree rotation. It doesn't matter if it's clockwise or counterclockwise because it's 180 degrees. That's gonna, what is that gonna do? That's gonna put, um, it's gonna cause these to interchange, right? And it's gonna cause these to interchange. So basically the darks became light, the lights became dark. The way of saying that mathematically is S1 became the negative of itself. Take that same S2, and if you do a rotation, what happened? Well, the darks just interchanged, and lights interchanged, and so nothing happened. So S2 went to S2. Take that same uh, C2, do a rotation. These changed. Okay, and you can see, what did you end up with? You ended up with a light there and a dark here and a light there and a dark here, which is the exact opposite of all these. So it became the negative itself. So you had a negative one, um, a one for S2 and a one, you add those together, you get a negative one. Indeed, that is what the character is for T2, negative one. Next one. Oops, oh, learning different functions here. Sorry about that. Um, okay, next one. Just checking the symmetry here. Next one is going to be S4. So, um, again, I'm going to choose the same area. If you can choose any S4 you want, the S4 is going to be there. We're going to do a 90, rota 90 degree rotation and a flip. That's what an S4 is. So what's going to happen? Uh, 90 degree rotation is going to bring this to that vertex there, but then it's going to flip up across the, uh, uh, sorry, nope. 
Start over here. S4 right here. Okay, so we're gonna do C4. That's gonna do, bring it here. And then there's a mirror plane perpendicular to it. Here's a C4, here's a mirror plane. It's gonna take stuff on the left and move it to the right. And so um, that's gonna bring it to here. So dark went to dark there. What's next? Next, um, we're going to do uh, a 90 degree rotation. And that's going to bring this point to there and this point to there. So light went to light. Okay. Um, and now we're going to do um, this one. Dark is going to go 90 degrees. And then it got flipped right to left. So dark is going to end up there. Okay. Um, and so we're ending up with, okay. So, and our last one is this one we haven't used. I should probably be using different colors here to help us. I'll do that on the, on the future ones. But uh, this is going to be a 90 degree rotation. Um, that is going to bring um, this one down 90 degrees and then flip it. And so it's going to go there. So you're going to end up with um, this orientation. Okay, so S1 went to S3. Uh, let's clear that and let's do this on S2. Again, we're just checking trying to understand how this stuff works. S2 is supposed to go to negative S2. So let's see if we, I'll use different colors this time so we get less confused. Again, I'm doing this S4. So I gotta do a C4. So here I'll stay with black. There it's gonna go to that point and then it's gonna go here. Okay, now let's do a different color. So let's check where this atom is gonna go. That atom's, um, going to go uh, 90 degrees to here, and that's gonna get flipped over the sigma H, okay? And let's do this one, 90 degrees. Got flipped to that point there and gets flipped to the left from the sigma H. And lastly, we can do this point um, that is going to get flipped or turned 90 degrees that way and go over here. Okay. So you can see a white, uh, a light color circle went to a dark color circle here. Um, a dark color circle went to a, a light color circle went to a dark color circle. A dark color circle went to a light color circle. And the uh, last one was a dark went to a light, a green path. So that's a negative of itself. So that's what uh, S2 is going to minus S2 is. Okay. We could do a very similar thing here and show that you know S3 is going to go to the minus of S1. Hopefully you get the idea at this point. Um, let's let's just quickly go over the sigma Ds. Sigma Ds, we should get a character of one. Oh, by the way, why was the character negative one here? This was going to something else so that contributes zero to the trace of the matrix. This one to a negative one of itself, so it's negative one to the trace of the matrix. This one to something else, so it's zero. So zero plus negative one plus zero along the trace gate negative one matches the point group, okay? Last one is a sigma D. <clears throat> and um, so uh, this one here, uh, it looks like I chose a sigma D, a mirror plane that runs like this. Okay. And so we're going to do that mirror plane on all of those and see what happens. Well, these atoms don't change. They're in the mirror plane. These switched, but it went from white to white. And so overall, these didn't change and these went just white to white. Those didn't change. So overall, we got S1 back. That's what we're writing here. S1 goes to S1. What about S2? Um, uh, uh, S2 here, it's like I chose a different mirror plane. S1 goes S, again, there's so many mirror planes, there's six mirror planes, it doesn't matter which one you choose, you're gonna get the same answer. So you can see here I chose some mirror plane. Um, I think I know which one I chose, I chose one here. 
But anyway, let's keep drawing this one. I'll show you it doesn't matter. So, so far we have S1 going to S1. Um, here, what's going to happen? Um, these atoms are going to stay the same. Okay. And then this is going to go into that one, right? Those are going to switch. And so what are you left with? You're left with something that looks like this. Those switched and these stay the same. Okay. What is that? That's the negative of S3. Okay. Um, because it's just the opposite signs of S3. And let's see here. The last one. These don't change and these flip. That is S3. If those don't change and these flip, um, that gets you the negative of S2. Because you'll have white here, those don't change. You'll have dark there, and these flips. You'll have dark there, and you'll have white there. Okay? So anyway, you can see it's a little bit different than what we had here. We didn't have these negative signs, which chose a different mirror plane. But it doesn't matter because this S1 going to S1, that's going to contribute one to the trace of the matrix. The matrix, just to be clear, for um, this that we did right here, what would it be? It would be one, zero, and zero. And if we wanted to, um, we could fill in the other components. This is going to be uh, negative one, and this is going to be uh, negative one there. But all we care about is the trace is one plus zero plus zero, which is zero. Which is why we have ones here. So anyway, all this is just a lot of work showing you that these salts are of T2 symmetry. I told you that they were. We're just confirming that they actually are. Um, just so you know where this is coming from, they're triply degenerate. They're transforming into one another, right? We have a lot of cases where they're transforming. S1 isn't going into S1 or minus S1. S1 is going to S2 or an S3, right? Or the negatives of S3 and S2. So they're complicated this way, but that's why they have um, T2 symmetry. So that's sort of just a long side proving this.